Hi, I'm Paul Rako, and we're fortunate today to have Vegard Wolin here, who is a co-inventor of the AVR architecture we use in so many of our microcontrollers. Vegard, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, so my first question is a little about the history of the AVR. I started using them in about 1999 in a point of sale terminal we were designing, a little startup here. What was the history? Did you work on it at school? Yeah, so the, the history, base history is back to nine, 1990, 1991, where the first generation came out as a work, uh, a colleague of mine, Alf, and I did at the University of Trondheim. And uh, I made the, the what's the first generation of AVR as my master thesis, and I brought a copy cool. of that. Let's let's look at this. This is this is history. This is great. <laughs> this is history. So this is the master thesis of 1991, which is uh, uh, analysis and development of a um, risk-based on-chip microcontroller, which uh, which uh, and and the risk eight-bit risk is really the core of the AVR and. And it's, it's fun to read back. I haven't read it for quite some time. And as you see, Paul, there is, uh, at these dates, uh, these times we were writing. Well, register uh, definition, schematics. Yeah. And now, was it Harvard from the beginning, Harvard architecture instead of von Neumann, right from the beginning? Yeah, it, it really was. Uh, at the university, we, we, had, uh, we, had very, we had a very good computer science department and ele electronics department, and uh, thanks to strong professors and, and staff in, in those departments that uh, thought us to be and inspired us to be interested in this domain, mm -hmm. as well as we, we actually have a uh, and have still have a maker's lab at the university where we made cool stuff and things uh, on the, on the on our spare time outside the university which which led us to use microcontrollers and uh, those architectures at that point in time uh, those were hard to use didn't have the the, the proper tools i would say and, and also instruction set wise were complex and and, uh, and 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 basically not easy to use yeah. that very much led us to the idea of doing something which was much more regular simpler in its base architecture and much more of a uh, single cycle execution machine from a from the point of views of, of uh, really making it easy for the end user to make uh, control products out of it. Did you think even at university that about compiling C and it would be an 8-bit micro that would run C and run it well? Yeah, as we were very very much thinking of high-level languages as that was very, it, it was in its very early days, but assembly was very uh, awkward uh, to, to really be efficient on. And, uh, and, and uh, the C-like instructions and stuff were, were things we were actually thinking of from the very beginning to make, uh, make it efficient and easy to use from a higher level point of view. Oh, that's great. So did you ever get into a hardware development at the university level? Or did that come later when you partnered with Atmo? Yeah, so, so we, we did make some ASIC prototypes out of it already, the very first generation. Uh, that uh, didn't have flash, it uh, used ROM, so the program had to be thoroughly simulated uh, to start with, mm -hmm. uh, such that uh, the simulation made a perfect program which was programmed in ROM and uh, went into the ASIC and worked. 